Hey ladies, it's Megan. Um, I just laid Hannah down, so I wanted to do a quick vlog. I've got some questions to answer from my last video, or my video before the last, on um, this book. I don't know if you can see it. Um, this is my copy, and um, one of the questions I got was, why is this book so expensive? I really can't answer that question. All I can assume is that it's a very good book and it works for a lot of women. Um, I don't know if they're not making it anymore or um, if that's just what the book is worth. And in all honesty, I would spend 86 bucks on this book again if I had to. Um, it's not like a solve all. You're not going to get this book and then, you know, lose the weight and fall pregnant the next month. I don't want you ladies to think that. It just tells you as a PCO, PCOS lady what... It goes into detail what you should and shouldn't eat, why you shouldn't eat it, and so forth. Um, I had another question. I have got them right here, so I'm reading them. Um... I would like to know what your workout routine was. I need to start exercising and really don't know where to start. I have a few people that ask me about working out, if I worked out during pregnancy. Um, when I lost this weight, I was in nursing school. So I was crazy busy. But I also had a treadmill in my living room in front of the TV. Um, when my husband worked all evening, see, I would be in class till 2 or 3 and he would go to work at 5. Um, I would study and watch TV or I would get on the treadmill and watch TV. Um, it was just convenient for me. And when I got to the point to where I knew I needed to lose the weight, I was, some days I was walking 5 miles a day. Um, I know I walked at least four times a week. Um, you start, you have to start somewhere. So this is my suggestion. Start by doing 20 extra minutes of walking three times a week. If that means you walk your dog, if that means you park on the opposite side of the mall, um, just get extra walking in anywhere you can. As far as exercise routine, that's what I did. I walked more. I consciously got on the treadmill and said, I'm going to walk for this full 60-minute TV show or, you know, Biggest Loser. I always walked during the Biggest Loser every Tuesday. Um, so when I unpack my house, when we find a house and I unpack my stuff, I have a little log of a uh, little notebook I kept on my treadmill and I kept track of calories, time, length, all that good stuff. So um, maybe I'll make a video on that when I, when I can find it. Um, but as far as this book, um, there's over 500 pages and there was one area I wanted to read today. Um, and I don't know if you guys want me to like put the camera on the book or whatnot, but um, it's set up kind of different than some other books. Let's see. It says uh, what to eat and then guidelines on what to eat, how much to eat, um, and what not to eat. The, the main point of this book is not to give you a schedule of what to eat. Even though it does, let me show you. It does give you like a meal plan. Snacks and um, handheld uh, vegetables. It gives you recipes, you know, healthy. But that's only part of it. The rest of it is very detailed on what a PCOS should and should not eat. So let's see. Um, since this book is not a weight loss diet book where we tell you what to eat, X grams, protein, Y, grams, carbs, etc. Nor do we tell you to limit yourself to so many calories. 
women who have PCOS are not homogeneous population with a single problem. They are extremely ob obese women. They are very lean. Many are somewhere in between. Some have insulin resistance, while others do not. Some have serious multi-hormone disorders, but others have a less disorder profile. Some can eat a lot of food and not gain, while others, like me, can look sideways at food and gain a pound. Um, some will benefit from a high protein. Some will benefit from a low carb. Moreover, Moreover, your genetic patterns to specify to you. Other PCOS women will be slightly different from the genetic perspective. A diet ideal for you is not ideal for the next woman. So they can't just say, okay, this is what the PCOS diet is. But it teaches you what can help it, what can hurt it, and you've got to figure out what works for you. What worked for me was yogurt for breakfast. Yeah, yogurt is dairy. But it's not telling you to cut out dairy. It's telling you to cut down on dairy. Um, I did salads for lunch. I did ranch dressing. Yes, if I'm going to have a big plate of vegetables that is like no calories, because I don't prefer cheese. I don't do that. The only fat that I could put on a salad is um, sunflower seeds or grilled chicken. If I'm going to do a low-fat salad, I'm going to have some good dressing. So I did ranch dressing. I did uh, grilled chicken and grilled fish and steamed vegetables. It you ha you have to figure out what works for you. Um, I want to read the the next page. I'm not gonna read it all. Um, what not to eat? Like it says, oily, fatty foods. Stay away from fried foods, sugary foods, foods to avoid list. Um, I'm gonna flip it because um, you don't need me to read that. But uh. It, it says the unhealthy foods listed in these chapters are most likely a part of your diet at the time. In fact, the unhealthy foods on your list may form the core of your diet. Um, and then it just goes through, like, what kind of meats you should eat. Best meats for this recommended diet. Beef, any cut. Um, it's telling you to go lean, organic. Um wild you know if you can get a hold of deer meat and you like deer meat go for it um, and then it goes to unhealthy meats to avoid bacon bologna corned beef probably because the process hamburger um, honey turkey because of the honey because of the sugar with diabetes hot dogs because they're processed um, jerky because of the salt you know what I mean it just explains to you why and why not? What, you know, what are the best things for you? Seafoods. I can go more in detail, you know, if you see something. Um, that you want me to go in detail about. I just, like right here, okay, poultry. It says best poultry, good poultry, and unhealthy poultry. Everybody knows that fried chicken or breaded chickens are not good for PCOS, right? Well, that's what it's telling you. It's telling you go towards the chicken breast. Wild. So basically, okay, I'm going to, basically, it's telling you to go organic, go wild, go unprocessed, go as clean as you can go. Uh, and that's why I love this book, because if, I, if I'm questioning, ooh, should I, you know, should I have the fried chicken or the honey turkey well the fried chicken is processed fried and oily and the honey turkey is processed and it's got honey so which one would be better um probably the turkey because it's not fried you see what i mean anyways i am going to stop there but uh i also had another comment on this and it's I have no idea if she subscribed to me guys that's not my goal with this you, I don't need subscribers I just do this for me and to help other women out to be able to have babies and be mommies you know that is that's where my heart is but she said um Hi, Megan. I'm so inspired by your success. I, too, have PCOS. I've lost 60 pounds but gained some of it back. I'm 32 and have no children. Unfortunately, she's gone through some uh, fertility treatments and she lost her job and no insurance. 
but a lot of women that are overweight, like me, I was 350 pounds almost, 346, I lost 80 pounds and I was able to become a mom. If you have PCOS and you're lean and you're eating healthy, I'm not saying that losing weight is going to work for you. But if you're overweight, if you're obese, girls, let's get this weight off. I, I want to have another child. And a lot of you want to have a first child. So that's all I can say. If you've got any more questions about this book, if you want um, any detail about anything, just let me know. Put a comment below, private message me, whatever you would like. I hope you ladies stay healthy, and I will see you tomorrow.